Okay, this video is very different. Uh, you know, I'm concerned I'm gonna lose a load of you over this one. But just because, you know, it's not what you're interested in, maybe. I'm sure some of you will be, but... Um, so yeah, this isn't like my normal videos. If you like the yammerings, then the next one will be that. But this is me in church today. So we're in a very different part of Sheffield, and I've come to this amazing place. So this is where I got baptised six years ago. I was a full-on New Ager, and I can't quite remember what brought me here. Two friends brought me here. Desperation would have brought me here for sure. And I came in like, uh, you know, like, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not meant to be here. And I think I only came about six or eight times over an eight-month period, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't like it when we spoke about the Bible, but I really enjoyed the singing bit. And one day they were doing baptisms. They, yeah, I, I didn't know. And they were doing baptisms. And yeah, I just thought, I'll just give that a go, why not, you know? So I got baptised in this church six years ago. And it really meant nothing to me. I can't say I felt anything. It's hard to even really remember. But with the recent journey I've been on, obviously it's very interesting. Um, but you know, I did that. And like, now I am realising that I have always been a son of God. I just didn't acknowledge it. And God has always been trying to reach me. And there have been times, and like now I'm going back for all my time. I think there's been about four or five times where I have got on my knees and I have said to God, but if you sort this out, I will change my ways. And then he sorted it out and I never changed. Or maybe I did, but you know, not profoundly like I have done now. So there's a few people here that I remember. There's an old guy called George. I've just seen him. I asked him if he remembered, he goes, well, I made two one, but I can't really remember what happened yesterday. Uh, but he was just so happy to see me again, even though he didn't remember me. But, you know, what you realise with true Christians, or any Christians really probably, is they're just so happy when a new person comes to the congregation, because they know how life-changing it is. You know, if they've been touched by the Holy Spirit, they know what is about to happen for you. There's George, now he's picking up, that's mine, George. It's mine, Matt. All right, thank you, brother, thank you. So yeah, that's George. Um, the pastor is still the same, the man that baptised me, Pastor Anderson, he's still here, I haven't seen him yet. And I've just had a really great chat with Kuda, the head usher. But basically, the reason I come here, you know, this is miles away from my home. But the reason I come here is because it's full of black people and they know how to pray. Unbelievable, like the footage that I lost in the airport was... <laughs> basically, every black person I saw, I went up and snuck just in front of him with a camera and just went, God is good. And every single one of them went all the time. Now I'm not saying every single black person is a Christian, but, and you know, the more I'm learning, like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but the eldest, the, the oldest version of the Bible is from Ethiopia. There's some serious, serious stuff about Ethiopia, which I need to do some research into. Anyway, I'm gonna get in there. I might take a couple of clips in there, but I'm here to worship, not to YouTube. So yeah, excited, I'm really excited about this. really great was seeing the development of some of the guys that were six years ago so you know guys that were ushers are now like I don't even know what to say but you know like clearly learning to be pastors uh, the guy that was in I'm about to show you a guy called Phil who is like clearly like on his way to being a pastor now and the guy that was in his position before he's now got his own church in Rotherham like I love seeing that I love seeing people progress so that was awesome so this is Phil like he just popped out and did some incredible preaching Hallelujah. 
And then something unbelievable happened, like in terms of, you know, confirmations and God speaking to you. So if I open my Bible, which I haven't read for three days, if I'm honest, you will see. So here's my bookmark. I'm reading Acts. So this is the first time I've ever read the Bible. And this is where I'm up to. I'm up, I'm up to Acts. Dad, for God's sake. See, this is what it's like living with just unconscious parents, but I love them, it's fine. So, um, anyway, I love it. So, what does Pastor Anderson start talking about? Acts, chapter 2. His whole sermon was on Acts. And it was all about the Holy Spirit filling you, and like, it was just unbelievable. He was like, I'm speaking to someone in this room. And I was like, yes, you are. And it's just unbelievable, like the synergy, like once you open up to this stuff, it's just unbelievable. So now is 14 minutes of Pastor Anderson preaching. You know, I'm sure most of you won't be interested in it, but it meant so much to me and I just love it. So it's going in. And as you'll see, it really relates to my situation. Like I missed the first bit where he was basically talking about, you know, a calamity before you meet the Holy Spirit. But, you know, you'll, if you do watch it, you'll get the gist of that. I was just like... <laughs> there, there's what is called it's a disruption but it's for your good that's why it's divine if God is disrupting your program embrace it mm -hmm. yeah, it's man. for your good yeah, you're quiet today oh, that's <laughs> so here's the first one the first divine disruption that comes from God is that the coming of the Spirit in this text was supernatural. Do you notice that? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you this. I know there are folks that you know. It's not Taylor Never, it's not you. <laughs> there are folks that you know that will tell you, if I can't see it, I can't believe it. If I can't test it, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. These are scientific folks that believe that if what you are saying cannot be tested in a laboratory, then it's not true. Their reality is based on science. Mm. Their reality is based on matter. I've come to tell you that when the Holy Ghost comes, he's supernatural. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond your brain level. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to smart people now. <laughs> if you have a PhD in, 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 in physics, this one is beyond you now. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This is supernatural. When the, when the Holy Spirit starts dealing with you, mm -hmm. the manner in which He deals with you is supernatural. Amen. Amen. Can I say that again? Yeah. So what God is saying is, see, we talked about the word of God. The word of God does not need you to be intelligent. Amen. <laughs> Why? Because it's supernatural. Amen. In fact, Jesus said it's spiritual. Amen. So when the Holy Spirit comes to do business with you in your life, he comes in a supernatural way. His works are, so let me show you. So, look at, uh, if you could put verse 2 on the screen. So, Luke is a very smart guy. The guy who wrote this is called Luke. He was a, a, a physician, he was a doctor. So, he's trying to explain a supernatural phenomenon that he could kind of try and find words to describe it. Do you see the complexity of the matter? Mm -hmm. And he finds some words that we can learn from because we have seen these words in the Old Testament. So he says that suddenly, it was sudden because it was the 50th day. The clock had, had ticked and God was in a hurry. He waited for 10 days but this time he's in a hurry. So he comes, says suddenly there came uh, a sound. A sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Other versions say a violent wind. How many of you have experienced a tornado or a hurricane? 
Have you been to America? Okay, George was in this week. Anyone else? You just know the, the, the wind that blows. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe pay a visit to Florida, spend the whole day there in the middle of a hurricane, and then you, you will understand this case. <laughs> <laughs> example, example. Now, a, a rushing mighty wind is not, is not nice. The issue about this mighty wind was that it went to a specific room. It wasn't all over, Egypt, all over Jerusalem. It went to a specific room which had 120 people, like this room. About 120 people were in that room. And that mighty violent wind was trapped in that room. Not in the ocean, in a room like this. Do you see now where sound is coming from? This sound was so loud that people from outside, they could tell that there is something happening in that room. It's called the upper room. So, after this violent, rushing wind, I, I like the, the address. The address is it came from heaven. You notice that? He says, it filled the whole house where they were staying, uh, where they were sitting. Next verse. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And then he goes on to talk about other things. So here, here is the first supernatural thing we read here. is the blowing of a mighty wind. You remember, we were singing this. So they're in this house and there's this strong, mighty wind that comes. You see, if you were in this house and you were Jewish, what would come to your mind is Genesis chapter 2. Chapter 1, rather. Because in Genesis chapter 1, or chapter 2, the Lord created a human being, and the human being just stood there until he breathed yeah. onto this human being. Mm. And then the Bible says, and he became a living soul. So, yeah. Is that supernatural or scientific? Someone help me. Is that supernatural or scientific? Yeah, supernatural. 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 How many of you have done, what is it called, CPR? Does it always work, CPR? No. And it, it only works when there's a bit of breath inside. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. That's why cloning doesn't work with human beings. Mm. I'm sure you know no matter how advanced science is, it can create life. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, science kills life. Mm. But mm. here's the thing. Imagine you're in Genesis. And then there's the breath of God coming onto you. You become a living soul. But Genesis chapter 3 basically cancels out all that. So sin comes into the world. So Jesus comes between the Old and the New Testament. He dies on the cross and says, wait until you have received the Holy Spirit. Don't do anything until you have received the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he comes like a blowing wind to receive new life. It's as if God is, is, is bringing a whole new creation on earth. But from Genesis, from Acts chapter 2. My friend, you need the breath of God. Amen. You can't do this thing in your power. There has to be a supernatural breath of God that mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. upon your life because Amen. we've got to be empowered mm -hmm. by the Spirit of God. Amen. I believe that when the Holy Ghost comes, He will blow away all the chaff in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. We can't continue with chaff in our lives when the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Mm. This is one thing He's good at to cleanse us mm. and bring us to a place where we can interact with God not feeling shame or guilt. Mm. But there's another thing they see. They see this, the fire of God. Uh, in verse 3 it says, and tongues 
like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. So Luke is saying there's this wind that comes, but in the midst of this wind, he sees something like fire. And then this fire separates into little tongues of fire, and there were 120 of them. As long as you attended that meeting, you were going to receive something. Yeah. It was the appointed day. Yeah. Have, you, have, you, have you witnessed those days when, ah, today I don't want to go to church. You know, ah, today I don't want to go to that meeting. And, and, and suppose that you you then drag yourself unwillingly or willingly, whichever way, depending on who you're married to. Example. <laughs> anyway, you stagger to church. You finally find yourself in church. <laughs> and the preacher that day is talking about you. Yeah. He's looking at your wife. Did you tell the man? No, yeah. he did. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit has this thing called spying ministry. <laughs> 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 so what true. simple means in case you miscaught me what simple means is that nothing is hidden to the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but once in a while he whispers those things to someone mm -hmm. <laughs> hello <Amen>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to tell you what I heard <laughs> 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 hallelujah hallelujah so, Amen. we know what fire stands for from the Old Testament. See, Luke uses the term fire with some with he's not just throwing that term in there. It's a metaphor. He's taken from the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, when Moses saw the tree burning, but without being consumed by the fire, he approached it. Because the fire of God represents the presence of God. When God shows up in the Old Testament, there are places where he shows up by fire. But also we are reminded of the time when the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness. The Bible says they were led by a pillar of fire by night yeah. and a cloud by day. Yeah. And that pillar of fire was representing the guidance of God. Mm. That God was with them, guiding them yeah. to where he was taking them. Mm. But also we know that there is a prophet called Elijah who came to Camel, Mount Camel, and met a contest with the prophets of Baal. Mm. And he said, look, you call on your God. And we know that the fire of God came and burned the sacrifice. Mm. And that fire was representing cleansing, purification. Mm. 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 So sometimes, like we were singing, the Holy Spirit can choose to come to you in the form of fire. Yeah. Where your life is, is on fire. Yeah. 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 Because there are things being fixed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. There are things Amen. being corrected by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He comes and starts Amen. whispering to you, fornication is wrong mm -hmm. for a believer. Mm -hmm. You can't live this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, we don't hear this anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. He always goes whispers things. He whispers things. He keeps sometimes he puts pressure. He puts pressure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to be stubborn with God? Oh, it's yeah. tough, man. Oh, it's yeah. tough. God, the Holy Ghost is attracted to stubborn hearts. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, he's not talking about me. <laughs> he's definitely talking about me. I know he's talking about me. Every word. <laughs> Sometimes the Holy Ghost can come to you in the form of a... Just a... In a way, he's coming to guide you. Where you send some guidance in your life. You might come at crossroads where you don't know what to do. You don't know which, which place to go to. You don't know where to live. Mm. You don't know who to marry. Yeah. Hello. Mm. <laughs> you don't need to go to a non-Christian psychologist to tell you. Mm. Mm. Let me tell you right here. Mm. If you are a Christian, you hear from God. Consult an authorized vessel mm. of God. Mm. I'm not talking about, are you still in that place of what you mean? I've left. <laughs> I'm not talking about issues of life. Mm. You need a Holy Spirit filled believer. Mm. You need that. Why? Because God uses the Holy Spirit to give direction in life. Mm. 
You remember the church in Antioch when they were praying? The Holy Spirit spoke. He said, separate for me Barnabas and Paul. That is direction from the Holy Spirit. A lovely church, wonderful church. And God says, well, I can see what you're doing, but I need these two for something else. See, you get direction from God. But there are times when you need His presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need His presence. Hallelujah. Maybe where you work, you need His presence. There are things breaking out in your workplace that you don't even understand. I can tell you, you need the presence of God. Mm, amen. Let Him come. In your home, you need the presence of God. You need Him. You need Him. All these are triggers to the supernatural. To the supernatural. So he uses these terms because he wants us to learn something from them. And then you have got the speaking in tongues. Is it verse 4? So if you've made it to the end, God bless you. Thank you. Um, why did you watch it? Are you a man of God? Are you interested? Are you an atheist that watched it? Like, tell me. Like, I'd be really interested. And how did you find it? And did you see how it resonated in my situation? All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, you know, I really don't want to do it, but you know, if I'm doing this YouTube thing, you know, please like and subscribe. <laughs>